to continue with a uh, confidence interval for the population mean still in the part of confidence interval of the population mean before this we have uh, gone through what we call as the large sample size okay which is by using the first formula of mu equals to x bar plus minus z sigma over square root of n Okay, this is actually to represent the formula for the size of sample which is bigger or equal to 30 or even if we have small sample size which is less than 30 but the sigma is known uh, then we can we'll be using the same formula which means that we are using z distribution okay so for today we are going to continue with the second part when we have to use uh, the t distribution in our formula so uh, what would be the things that we have to consider in order for us to uh, use this formula of t okay so you have to check the size of the sample either it is lesser than the t and the sigma is unknown okay you have to check the size okay if it is less than the t and the sigma is unknown then we'll be using this formula of x bar plus minus t s over square root of n the rest of the thing are quite similar it's actually the same as what we have done before it's just that this time around we replace the place of t sorry the, the place of z with t and the place of sigma with s okay when we don't have the value of sigma uh, when sigma is unknown the place of sigma will be replaced by s okay that will be happening for the size of the sample which is lesser than the t. Alright, we'll see on how to check the value from the table of t. Okay, it is not going to be uh, the same as what we have done for z. z is slightly easier because you will be given the three values that we are going to use for 90%, 95% and 99%. Okay, so whatever size of uh, whatever size that we have for this case Okay, for the first case, whatever size that we have, we are going to still use the same value of z. Okay, it's just depending on the level of confidence. Okay, the value of z is just depending on the level of cons, uh, confidence. Okay, but it is not the same case for t. Okay, for t, we have to consider two different things. Okay, the first one is what we call as alpha. Alpha is actually what we call as level of significance. Okay, the other one is the degree of freedom. Okay, degree of freedom. Okay, so degree of freedom is actually taken from n minus one. Okay, so for n minus one, n is actually the number of the sample, which is the size of the sample. Okay, so for different size of sample, we actually have different t value. Okay, it is not the same as the case of z. Okay. For the case of Z, when you want to use the value of Z, you can just check the level of confidence and straight away use the, uh, the value from the table. Which means that it is not related to the size uh, when you take the value of Z from the table. But you have to check on either it is bigger or equal to 30 or less than 30 but sigma is no. Okay. Now we'll see the example on how to read the table of T. This one. Right, the table of t. Okay, I'm going to show you the table over here, or maybe over here. Okay, table of t. Okay, but this is how we actually uh, calculate, or we have to do in order for us to read the value of t. Okay, we have to check the level of confidence. The first thing first is to check the level of confidence. Okay, so level of confidence. For example, if let's say the level of confidence is 90%, okay, 90% is actually 90 over 100, so it is going to be 0 0.90, okay, so that is the level of confidence, okay, for us to find the alpha value, alpha value is actually what we call as the level of significant, okay, the significant level is the level that we reserve for the one that we are not sure, we are not confident, so alpha is actually level of significant. Okay, so if you are saying that you have 90% level of confidence, your level of significance will be 10%. Okay, it's just the complement of 100%. Okay, so it will be 
5%, 0.10. Okay. This is the first thing, the value of alpha. The second thing to check is the degree of freedom. Okay. For example, let's say the size of the sample is 19. Okay. So for you to find the degree of freedom, you'll be minus it with 1. So 19 minus 1 is equivalent to 18. All right. Then only we can actually try to refer to the table. Okay. But before we refer to the table, put all the values in the T uh, value as stated here. Okay. This T actually can be <coughs> can be written as this one T alpha over two and minus one. And because of alpha just now is zero point one zero. So we'll be having 0 0.10 over 2 and degree of freedom is going to be 18 minus 1. So you divide 0 0.10 with 2 then it will be equals to T 0 0.05 and 17 is the degree of freedom. Alright, so when you look at the table, table of T, you can try to find out the place of um, the place of alpha over 2 which is 0 0.05 and the place of degree of freedom which is 17 from the table of t and if we look at the table of t we can see that the value is 1.74 okay so that is the way to find out the value of t okay so now we are going to look at the illustration okay illustration 4 right a study by an industrial engineer shows that in a certain shop a random sample of 20 employees left their workstation on the average of 4.6 times per day with a standard deviation of 1.1. Okay, construct a 99% confidence interval for the average number of times an employee leave the workstation. Okay, the workstation. Alright, so now we have to check the first thing first, which is the sample of the size. Sorry, the size of the sample. Okay, size of the sample is 20. Right, size of the sample is 20 and then we have standard deviation given here but the standard deviation given here is the standard deviation for a sample which means that we don't have the population standard deviation therefore with the size of the sample which is 20 and the sigma is unknown sigma is the population standard deviation we just have the value of s which is 1.1 1.1 and the x bar which is the average is 4.6 and we also have level of confidence written as 99% okay so because of the size of the sample is small and the sigma is unknown therefore we'll be using t distribution okay t distribution so before we continue with the calculation you know that already you will be using this formula which is mu is equals to x bar plus minus t s over square root of n. So this t is the one that we have to read from the table of t. So how do you find out the value of t from the table? Okay, let us look at this case. t, because of the level of confidence is 99%, 99%, the level of significant would be 1%. That level of significant is actually our value of alpha. Okay, so we'll be having t of 0 0.01 over 2 and degree of freedom of 20 minus 1 which is n minus 1 and that is why we have t of 0 0.005 and 19 the degree of freedom and when we read the value or take the value from the table of t we'll be using or we'll be having the value of 2.86 Okay. So after you get the value of t, then only you can substitute into the formula. Substitute into the formula, which is the x bar is 4.6, and then the value of t just now is 2.86, and the value of s is 1.1, and the square root of 20 because of the size just now. Okay. So after your calculation, this is what you are going to get. It is going to be mu equals to 3.9, and 5.3. Okay, so what is the meaning of this? Alright, so when you want to interpret, you can straight away try to understand the situation again, the scenario given to you again, and interpret from there. Okay, so because of this is the last question being asked, we can actually try to use the same sentence in order for us to interpret. Okay. 
I mean to say that I am 99% confident that the, the average number of time an employee leaves the workstation is between 3.9 and 5.3. Okay, so that is how I interpret about the interval estimate that we have here. Mu equals to 3.9 and 5.3. Okay, again. So, I am 99% confident that the average number of time an employee leave the workstation is between 3.9 and 5.3. Okay, we can also assume that because this is a discrete data, discrete data, we are talking about the number of time an employee leaving their workstation. So, we can also say that or we, we can try to approximate, make it as an approximation of 3.9 when you round off it is going to be around the value of value of 4 okay and 5.3 will be the value of 5 okay so if you don't want to use this uh, decimal point numbers okay you can also try to estimate or put the approximation of 4 and 5 because of 3.9 when you round off you get 4 and 5.3, you run off to the nearest number, you have 5. Okay, so when you interpret, you can also say that I am 95. Sorry, I am 99% confident that the average number of times an employee leaves their uh, workstation, an employee leaves the workstation, is between four to five times. Okay, between four to five times. That would be the way to interpret. Thank you.